Good day grade 12s. My name is Viola from the Distinction Bound Student and I'd like to welcome you to possible essay number 1. I believe you have already watched the previous video on this playlist which introduces these essays. If you haven't, I strongly suggest that you watch it before this one. I will hand over to the man behind this whole Distinction Bound movement. The author, the publisher, the YouTuber, the entrepreneur. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I present to you, Cardin. Thank you, Viola. Good day, grade 12s. Well, in this lesson, we are going to cover the markets. It's possible essay number one. And um, what we are simply going to do is we are going to show you what it is that you are going to discuss in the exam. And this one is for 26 marks. So let's see what the essay is about and let's go through it. All right, so in an exam, what do you expect? How do, they, do you expect them to ask you? They'll probably say, discuss in detail uh, the, I almost say the four broad types of market structures. All right, that I can point out because there are two essay type questions, possible essay type questions. The other one that you could confuse with this says, discuss the four broad types of market structures. You are going to do this topic in term two under microeconomics. Now there they are talking about perfect monopoly, oligopoly and monopolistic. But in this case, they'll say, discuss in detail the four markets within, ah, discuss in detail markets within a four sector model. So what could confuse is the word markets and the number four, because there we say the four broad types of market structures. Here we are saying uh, markets within a four sector model. But what we mean here by four sector model, we are talking about uh, households, businesses, government, and the four foreign sector. So those four is what we are referring to as within a four sector model. So let's find out what is it that we are talking about. But to get started, we need to know what is a market. And I think this is a term you've been defining since grade, I don't know, grade nine, or even before that in EMS. All right, here we're saying a market is a mechanism. Uh, I don't normally like the definition that says a market is a place because uh, where, where buyers and sellers meet, uh, there's that definition, yes. In as far as it might be correct, it, nowadays, uh, it's, people don't necessarily have to meet, uh, if I may put it that way. So there, because of technology, uh, we don't necessarily meet all the time, but we could participate in a market. So I, I would rather define it as a mechanism that brings together buyers and sellers of a good or service in order to determine the price and quantity of the goods or service that are going to be exchanged. All right. So first we are going to talk about the product market. In this market, you have to, because according to the exam guidelines, uh, when, when you are discussing the product market, you have to talk about consumer goods, capital goods, non-durable, semi-durable, and durable goods. We'll go deeper. The next one is the factor market. Yes, we'll learn just now what is a factor market. I'm sure you remember we did this in lesson one as well. The next one is a financial market. Uh, the next one, oh, in that financial market, you need to discuss the money market. You need to discuss capital market. And then the last one is the foreign exchange market. All right, so let's start with the first one, product market. What is a product market? All right, so we can say goods and services are traded on this, on the product market. So what is a product market? It's a market where goods and services are traded. Simple as that. Households, government, and the foreign sector purchase these goods and services from firms on this market. Yes, that's true. You saw when we did the secular flow model, we said after we get our income, we pay tax and after paying tax, we then spend. And mostly what do we spend our money on? Uh, oh, sorry. Before we spend, we save. Uh, that is if we are uh, surplus units. And if we are deficit units, we borrow. But at the end of the day, we are going to spend money on the product market. So it is a market where goods and services are traded. The next point is 
services are non-tangible actions that uh, satisfy uh, people's needs and wants so they are different from goods because goods are tangible examples of services are those offered by an accountant an educator a doctor a driver etc forces of demand and supply determine the equilibrium price and quantity so in this market uh, when we buy a fruit for two rands uh, no one has really decided on that price but forces of demand and supply right the next point goods are tangible items and they include consumer goods, capital goods, durable goods, and non-durable goods. We'll go into detail with these ones just now. Households purchase consumer goods for consumption and businesses purchase capital goods for use in the production process. So already we see a distinction between consumer goods and capital goods. But still, we are going to go deeper with this one. All right, let's go and have a look at consumer goods. What are they? All right, so anything that you are going to buy from a shop uh, as a person, you representing households, that item, if you buy it for consumption, it is a consumer good. So a good example is food, clothes, you know, all those things, they are consumer goods. Let's see. Consumer goods are products that are purchased for consumption by consumers to satisfy their needs and wants, which is what I just said. They are alternatively called final goods because they are the end result of production. And when 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 uh, capital goods are purchased by businesses, um, we call that capital formation. When that happens, the goal is to produce a consumer good. Like look at factories, they manufacture clothes. They manufacture cars uh, those clothes those cars they are consumer goods so it is an end result so at the end of the day we say they are final goods examples of okay we have clothes i talked about clothes we have food let's move on to capital goods we always say these goods are not produced for their own sake they are produced to make other goods e.g machinery right so when we buy an oven if we are a bakery, the oven is not the end result. The, we don't buy it for, um, for, for its own sake. We buy it because there's something that we are targeting to produce. And that something is a consumer good, right? Now we can make intermediate goods with consumer goods, with, with capital goods, uh, for instance, a grinding mill is a capital good. It grinds maize into millimill, but the millimill is not the end result. The millimill we we want it to make pap, so pap is the end result. All right, so we can make intermediate goods with capital goods. All right, the next point is capital goods always um, open a pathway to increased efficiency and productive capacity facilitating improved services as well as new incomes and um, employment for firms and households the act of purchasing capital goods i've mentioned it already is known as capital formation which is denoted by the symbol i right let's move on to non-durable goods these are goods that can only be used once e.g uh, an apple so we cannot reuse these goods. We, we consume it once and it's gone. You'll see it's different from semi-durable goods because these goods can last for more than once. You can use them for more than once, but not for a very long time. So they can, you, you use a chalk, like in this case, you can use a pen, but if you use a pen now, you can put it away and use it again tomorrow. You can use it next month. You can use it, you know, a couple of times, but uh, you wouldn't be using a pen uh, every day for a year, unless if you're just making one tick and put it away tomorrow, one tick, put it away, yes, that way. But if, I if you are using it like to write some notes, 
and then you put it away tomorrow you can continue using it but it will come to a point where it's finished but you see you don't use it only once uh, you use it a couple of times and then it comes to an end but uh, this reminds me of one of my learners who once said but say the ink uh, only you, you use it once and um, I said, okay, you can take it that way to say um, when you make a mark in a book, that ink is used once. But in this case, I'm saying a pen. So ink is not a pen. A pen ink is part of a pen. So a pen is a good example of. So in an example, this in an exam, this can be arguable if you say. Uh, Give, give examples of non-durable goods and then you say ink, you know, people could argue about that one. So I always say to my learners, uh, and I'm saying that to you as well, avoid things that, um, you know, that one would say, yes, it is. And another person would say, no, it's not. Take simple things like food. It's as easy as a non-durable good because you only eat it once a, a sip is available for one person so it's non-durable uh, so a pen would be a good example on semi-durable the next one is durable goods yes a good example chalkboard right there um, I always use a car you'll see on the internet there will be advertising a 1964 Mercedes-Benz whatever whatever uh, as a vintage car so if if it's older than you, then wow, it is durable. Okay. Now, the next thing you need to know is a factor market, which is on the other side. And uh, it is a market where factors of production are traded. And um, so households are selling their factors of production on this market. Businesses and government purchase them on this market. Okay. Now, on this factor market, we say um, the price of and, and quantity is also determined by inter interaction of demand and supply. It's as simple as that. But now uh, we might as well go deeper into discussing the things that are being sold on this market. And um, I, I, I don't wish to, you know, spend much time on this because uh, we've been doing this since grade 11. So we have land. Land is one of the items uh that is sold on this market land we say it's natural resources and its remuneration is um remuneration for land is economic rent yes okay that's all i can say on this one i'm not going to go through all this but you can read if you want the next one is labor labor is a measure of the work done by human beings and again i'm not going to go deep onto this one uh, it's as easy as wages and salaries being um, remuneration for land. The next one is capital. And capital is, we've just talked about capital just now. Capital is man-made physical goods used to produce other goods and services. Remuneration for capital is called interest. The last one is entrepreneurship. And uh, this is the process of be bringing land labor capital together uh, in the in order to produce a good or a service and the remuneration for this is profit so if you're an entrepreneur you're going to make a profit all right the next one um which has two things money market and capital market you see the only difference is very 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 small all right the financial uh, market consists of banks insurance companies pension funds and the jse um, funds from surplus units are channeled to deficit units in this market and surplus units are those firms or households in the economy that do not spend all their income. Um, they are called the savers in the economy. Savers deposit their surplus funds into financial institutions. The institutions then use the money to lend to deficit units, which are called borrowers. So all this is happening in this market and then deficit units are those households firms and government in the economy that are looking for more funds uh, so it's like you draw up a budget uh, you have ten thousand but you need twelve thousand so you are going to borrow two thousand 
but from whom are you borrowing the 2000 this 2000 is made available for those who are in surplus uh, in that is someone who has 10,000 just like you but they only need 8,000 so they can save the 2000 and that 2000 can be given to you okay right so what how does this happen okay depending on how it happens then we can call it or should I say how does it happen or should I say uh, what's the duration okay so we have the money market which is just like the capital market but the difference is very very small the difference is just one word and the word is long the word is short All right this is used by participants as a means of borrowing and lending in the short term from a few days to just less than three years that's what we say here in economics okay now others may want to say three years is not short term yes we say three years is short term in short it is a market for short-term savings and loans. The SARB is a key institution in this market. Same applies to the other market, which is the capital market. Kinds of securities that, um, that change hands in this market. We have treasury bills. We have reserve bank debentures. We have bankers, all this, yes. All right, let's go to the other one. The other one, like I said, the only difference is this one here. I, I, I should have... Um, I should have done that. Okay. I should have underlined on the previous years, uh, long term. This is the only difference. And then, so it's a means of borrowing and lending in the long term. I can repeat the same way I defined the previous one and just change the word long term. All right. Uh, in short, it is long term deposits or and borrowings. Now we are having a good example, mortgage bonds. The JSE is a key institution in this market, right? Uh, then we have, um, in effect, uh, in, in an open economy, foreign currency is needed to facilitate transaction. I am very, very sorry. I'm, I'm even getting confused as to what I'm talking about. This one is supposed to be the... I'm very, very sorry. Yo. Okay, so this is supposed to be a foreign exchange market. So I'm looking here and I'm like, this doesn't make sense. All right, you forgive my handwriting. Can you take this one out? All right, the foreign exchange market. Uh, so what is this market? It is a market where one currency can be exchanged for another, as simple as that. This is a market where we trade rands for dollars, pounds for euro, and so on. The amount um, that is received on exchange depends on the exchange rate, yes. And the exchange rate itself is determined by forces of demand and supply. If more people want to buy the rand, it appreciates. If many people are selling the rand, it depreciates. And there are so many reasons why the rand can be oversupplied or over-demanded. Okay, uh, I'm thinking of one right now. In 2010, when it was when South Africa was hosting the FIFA World Cup, there was high demand for the rand because many people wanted to come to South Africa. So as a result, the rand appreciated. Another thing, when um, when Jacob Zuma um, did a cabinet reshuffle, and then um, made david fan whoever the finance minister uh, people out there were like oh let's de-invest we, we we don't want to invest in south africa anymore so so many people were selling their what uh, south african assets or like taking their money out of south africa so as a result they had to supply a lot of the rand and demand another currency so that is why you see when uh, a president says something if people feel like this is good for the economy the the rand is going to go up if people feel like this is bad for the economy the rand is going to go down and what causes that is simply i'm trying to locate yes these are the two words when people feel like this is good for the economy they demand more and the, the rand goes up when people feel like this is bad for the economy, they sell the rand. Okay, so they sell the rand 
in this case they buy it so when many people buy the rent it goes up when many people are selling it it goes down it's as easy as that right so you can get hold of foreign currency um through any commercial banks uh, and and we call that a bureau de change and you'll find that fnb absa net bank capitec standard bank you'll find out that these banks have these bureau de change over to you viola thank you Cardin. in the next video we will move on to possible essay number two and it says discuss in detail the new economic paradigm explain smoothing of cycles that's it for today don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post new content to our channel. We are also giving away the Distinction Bound student t-shirts to people who buy more than 10 books. At the moment we have the following textbooks, Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 plus Business Studies Grades 11 and 12. We are looking forward to adding more books to our catalog. Remember our books come in two versions, complete and no answers versions. Complete versions have answers and no answers versions do not. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video. God bless.